The megalithic site of Gornaya Shoria is undoubtedly one of, if not the most incredible ancient site on Earth. Found upon the Shoria Mountains in southern Siberia, it is a place that has long been argued by influential academics and funded geologists as merely being a natural formation, which, simply by chance, appears to have once been an artificially constructed site. The reason for this denial of any artificial origins is unquestionably due to the size of some of the stones which make up the site, with the heaviest that academics have noted reaching far into several thousand tons in weight. This would make it the largest megalithic site discovered in the world if one could find any compelling evidence of the site once having an artificially constructed origin. Additionally, if proved to have an artificial origin, the erosion present on such enormous blocks would be indicative of a civilization which existed many, many millennia ago. Russian media, along with many other funded outlets and institutions, by default, have to deny that these stones could ever have been created via artificial means. This is due to the long-attested timeline for man, and the subsequent protection of the true past of our species, a timeline which spans much further into the past than currently claimed, one which I am systematically uncovering upon my channel. Popular news outlets have regularly presented articles written by Russian scientists who, predictably, concluded that this rock formation be the result of geological processes associated with the intense weathering of the rock, comprising Mount Inshoria. Both tectonic forces acting on deeply buried bedrock and pressure release that occurs within near-surface bedrock uplifted the eroded stones, which they claim that this supposedly commonly forms rectangular block-like rock formations that consist of jointed rocks. However, as the site has become more and more well-known, within circles not bound by the chains of mainstream academic funding, and thus free to investigate the idea of the area indeed once having been artificially created, evidence of this incredible reality. Compelling characteristics of this ancient site has recently been discovered which I feel is overwhelming evidence of the site indeed once having been an ancient settlement. This reality, although simply impossible for any loyal academic to admit to, is one that these recently discovered stones proves beyond doubt not only were these stones clearly cut using lost ancient stone cutting technology, but has left a signature mark upon the stone, uncannily similar to that in which I have named the Cyclopean Civilization. These same signature tool marks can be found upon the unfinished obelisk of Aswan, Egypt, and also the most important link I feel I have ever researched, Basda Caves, which has not only been academically admitted as the ancient quarry for the stones of Haran, but due to the most peculiar design of these blocks, has enabled me to link the site to not only Gornaya Shoria, but countless other seemingly impossible, as yet unexplained, ancient ruins all over the globe. These blocks found at the site are not only of an enormous scale, but are undoubtedly artificially cut using some form of stone-cutting technology created by a lost civilization. These stones, I feel, not only prove the site's artificial origins, but due to the pattern left by the tools which work them into the shape that they are today, was built by the same civilization responsible for Baalbek, which also contains stones which are well over a thousand tons in weight, the unfinished obelisk which is also well over a thousand tons. Yet this site is unquestionably now the largest currently recognized to still be in existence here upon our planet, with only the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry that unfortunately were left unliberated topping them in weight, with the largest at the quarry reaching far over the 16,000 tons mark. Yet the site has still not been fully explored, so there is a high chance that some of the stone in Gornaya Shoria may even top that of the blocks of Yangshan Quarry. These stones are unquestionably an incredible valuable find, and regardless of academia's deliberate ignorance in regards to such discoveries, 
has finally vindicated all those claimed as fringe researchers as having been right on the money with their astonishing claims of it once having been man-made, a claim now proven to be a reality. Not only is Gornaya Shoria one of the most incredible sights on Earth, but it is unquestionably highly compelling. Archaeologists have discovered yet another ancient anomaly, which has linked a now lost but once clearly advanced global civilization. Pertaining to a wall relief in Peru, belonging to the oldest civilization in the Americas. The wall, although dated to approximately 3,800 years ago, depicts what many now believe is an illustrated narrative of the difficulties they experienced prior to a cataclysm caused by an ancient climate change. One meter high and 2.8 meters long, the wall relief was discovered in the seaside archaeological site of Vichama. 110 kilometers north of Peru's capital, Lima. The Vichama site is part of the recently discovered, yet now lost, Caral civilization, also known as Norte Chico. Dated at over 5,000 years ago, this dating alone makes it the oldest civilization known to have dwelled within the Americas, now claimed as purely coincidental. This civilization flourished around the same time as that of the thriving civilization of Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and also Chinese civilizations. The Corral civilization was located in the Supi Valley, along the north-central coast of Peru. Made of adobe, a clay-like material, the wall seemingly documents climate change, one which could not have been contributed to by human activities. Archaeologist Ruth Shandy, who oversaw the excavations at the site, hypothesized that the serpents within represented a water deity that irrigated the earth and made seeds grow. She believes the relief was likely done towards the end of a drought and famine, that the Corral civilization, among others we have covered in the past, once experienced with other reliefs displaying emaciated humans. Many self-funded archaeologists now believe, like we have postulated, that the discovery reinforces the notion that these early humans were depicting the difficulties they faced due to climate change and a depletion in available water for irrigation, which had a large impact on their agricultural production. The excavation has, to date, unearthed the ruins of 22 buildings in a 25-square-hectare space. It would appear that, just like that of the side of Tikal, and the now lost plaque which once depicted the dramatic scene of a cataclysm, a great flood, along with erupting volcanoes, with a boat seemingly attempting to escape this event, surrounded by many of the population drowning, a cooperating artifact fortunately photographed before its mysterious disappearance. Was there indeed a great flood? One which seemingly followed a great famine? It would seem the evidence for such an event is mounting, thanks to not only the evidential sediments which once drenched many of the still unexplained ancient sites of the world, but also by its depiction by those who lived through it. It is, indeed, a highly compelling mystery. There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past, many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology and our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics, one of which is the ancient chariot, clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses clearly indicative of a highly capable group, 
This incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts, most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines, something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate – that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others – Pumapunku, Giza, Petra, etc. – sites created with such accuracy that to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined, cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly once of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings, and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones, each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies. The Plain of Jars, located in Laos, being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century, when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachari kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery. And although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess, yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts 
have unfortunately crumbled during their long life, which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study, and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins, absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology. As per this mythology, Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child used to play chess here with these pieces. And although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Inexplicable, enigmatic, still surviving ancient uparts, named after their academically claimed creators, the Kachari ruins, a set of large and incredibly heavy relics whose purpose or indeed true age remains a largely ignored area of study by any individual who depends on institutional funding for their career survival. Yet there are many other ancient sites which litter modern-day India, whom have an equally enigmatic history. Some of these sites we have covered in the past, like that of Kailash Temple, a remarkable ancient achievement carved directly from a bedrock of earth with such artistic vision and accuracy that any logical explanation for its creation remains a challenging and still elusive reality surrounding not only the many sites we have already covered, but countless others which still lay either undiscovered or deliberately ignored by mainstream media. Yet our next area of interest has encountered a polar experience, having been officially acknowledged as one of India's most important of ancient sites. Known as the Udiagri Caves, they are a set of 20 rock-cut caves near Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh, and according to mainstream historians, dates from the early years of the 5th century. We have often postulated that some ancient religions, having survived the test of time, and we have often encountered Buddhist or Hindu belief systems engraved upon currently inexplicable stone carvings and ancient structures, which we feel are indicative of a lost civilization's advanced capabilities. Cave 5, in particular, possesses depictions of ancient reptilian creatures, later attributed to ancient religious systems, yet the original inspiration for these carvings is an ongoing mystery, and whether inspired by religious beliefs or possible real events, is an ongoing mystery that mainstream academics continue to stifle the legitimacy and mainstream adoption of. Claimed as that of Vishnu, this depiction of a giant reptile consuming comparatively tiny human figures is a depiction which is undoubtedly of great historical importance, yet we hypothesize that only a small portion of existing human history has ever been explored in detail, or indeed permitted to be a mainstream possibility. Odiagri literally means the Sunrise Mountain, and is, interestingly, not the only ancient site with this name located within modern-day India. Udiyagri Wazi was a Buddhist and Bhagavad Gita site by the 2nd century, as evidenced by the Heliodorus Pillar, yet this inhabitation is possibly merely the adoption of a surviving structure. Additionally, 
While the Heliodorus pillar has supposedly been preserved without damage, many other similar sites are all but dilapidated ruins, possibly suggesting that this claim of creation is in reality a hoax. And while Buddhism was prominent in Sanchi, near Udiyagari in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, it is highly possible that the religious teachings date from a lost period of ancient history. According to Das and Willis, recent archaeological evidence, such as the Udiyagari lion capital, suggests that there was a sun temple at Udiyagari. The Surya tradition in Udiyagari dates from at least the second century, and possibly one that predated the arrival of Buddhism. It is this tradition that gives it the Sunrise Mountain name, and we feel is yet more supportive evidence in defense of the channel's postulations. It is a place which we find highly compelling.